Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your support of the channel as always. And today we have Ants Marching. Ants Marching. This is uh, one of Blues Traveler's accounts. He says in his note, and I, I thought this was interesting as I watched this go down because I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. Then I recalled he had sent me a note. I sort of recall, recalled what he said in it. I went and grabbed it. And he said, I have so many light tank games, 30,000, and very few of any other type. I've been trying to improve my heavy gameplay. And the reason I bring that up is because as I was watching this the first time through, I went, what on earth is going on here? Couldn't quite figure it out. Then I recalled that note and I said, ah, very interesting. So I'm going to let you see what happens here. We are platooned. We'll discuss that in a minute. Top tier with a tier 6 and tier 5 battle. So really with a HT number 6, we should be in a great position to... To have a big game right this is a great setup there's a lot of farming that can be done on this particular one he is facing two o ones or o i's whatever they are and two kv2 so he does have to be careful because between the four of those a couple blaps from those guys and we can be out of the game if they pen got to watch that for sure and what's really weird about this particular match is there's two heavies on ants marching side and there's four on the other it is unusual that you see that big of a mismatch, but we're seeing a lot more of that with the matchmaker lately because the size of the NA server in terms of population is going down. So matchmaker will struggle on occasion. We are here on Himmel's Muravanka Dorf. We'll go ahead and get started. He said he did have comms with his platoon. We will mention that a little while later because as you will note, Ants marching is going marching one by one, or maybe it's two by two because Mud Falcon is pushing in there ahead of him with the Super Chaffee. And the M6, the other tier six heavy, is off that way, which is a more common heavy spot. A couple guys going over to the Magic Forest, and Ants marching is marching right to the church. This is kind of where, I, as I was watching this the first time through, I said to myself, Self, what is, what is going on here? There are some bushes and things here. It's, it's not an awful spot. It is in the middle. It does have some control. But this is the initial deployment. And we've gone to the church in the middle. And you do not usually see heavies go into here. It looks like he's knocking something down there, maybe to get a shot. If they do push into the middle, it does have some farming capability right there to shoot them if they try to get into that little middle spot. Ants Marching is knocking down some buildings so that he can get shots. So there are some side shot opportunities right there, but you generally don't see a heavy go there. Now who usually goes here? Mediums and light tanks. Light tanks. So go back to Ants Marching saying that he plays a lot of light tanks and he's trying to improve his heavy tank gameplay. And right now we're playing a lot like a light tank. On this map, I'm going to pause it here because he's, we're going to talk about this engagement with the Type 64 in just a second. On any map, to be honest with you, with heavy gameplay, you want to go to the important heavy spots. Your M6 is in one of them, potentially over in the Magic Forest, although you don't have a lot of support. So I don't know if pushing into the forest alone with a heavy tank over here would be the way to go. That being said, break, break, on to the next point, which I think is more important. If you're going to platoon, guys... My advice is go together someplace. You have to take into account the tanks. Obviously, you don't want the Super Chappy going to a heavy brawl and attempting to brawl heavy. So maybe this platoon splits up a little bit. But I would absolutely have the two heavies together. Because these two tanks are DPM monsters. They can drop some pain. And if they work together, they're pretty amazing. So I'm not a big fan of this particular deployment splitting up into the middle. And I don't know maybe if maybe Ants, you'll have to let us know down there, if it was more of a reflexive, this is kind of where I go in my light tanks thing. I'm kind of assuming that to some extent. So very interesting on the initial deployment. All right, let's talk about the Type 64. And I see you do this multiple times. Now, this is his view. So we come around the corner, and now we've zoomed out a little bit. I think you're trying to put the pipper on him, but if we zoom in like this, we can see this guy. I mean, this should be a fairly easy shot. I mean, you don't have to go in as far as I do, but something like this to highlight him, to find the guy. Where'd he go? Come here. There he is. What happened now? Now I can't find him. There he is. But he's moving through. Watch. We hit him again. Oh, man. Easy shot. Just a little bit of lead fire right there. Even back this much zoomed out. But if we just lead him a little bit pink, 
take a shot. Now back to what Ant's marching is doing. He does take a shot, and it's not a bad, badly aimed shot, but I think you really had an opportunity in there to take one shot that was much better aimed. So I was watching this, and I saw you headed over this one. I went, well, okay, um, interesting. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would be taking my heavy over here, and especially drive out into this open field with a heavy. You have to know, being a light tank player, that there's probably several people up in this bush line. And if your team hasn't showed up, they've filtered through a bit. So after about two minutes of no one being there, they're going to start kind of moving up, maybe poking and prodding, getting along this ridge line. And driving out into the open is probably not a great idea. We do get spotted. There's a leopard. We take a hit, but it doesn't pen us. We kind of try to do an auto-aim thing right here. Could we have had a better shot? Absolutely. Look at that. So just a little zoom in, and we take that nice shot. It feels to me, again, I'll keep beating this dead horse. It feels to me like you're really trying to do some light tank stuff. This, this is something you might have done with a light tank. Post up in the middle, try to get some cheeky shots, get some spots. Hey, look, no one's over here. Let's come over here and get the, the spotting going on. Mud Falcon is going on, so maybe this is a support situation here with you helping him as he spots stuff. All good. But again, you've taken a heavy and you've put it right out in the open. And we have this fast-firing LEF and the Su-122 with a bunch of TDs and stuff not spotted. It's just, this is, this is a very dangerous spot to go with your heavy. So Leopard disappears, Super Chaffee bails out of that thing. And we find one of the OIs. Wow, holy cow, okay. So we see that, we don't shoot, I don't really know why. It is a thick turret, but I think I'd have taken that shot. It was a good shot, and then you could have disappeared down below the, the terrain right here and get reloaded well before he got anywhere close. So think about that a little bit. We sort of got off track a bit from the RBFM. Might have been thinking that that's an easier pen, but you had to really expose yourself to do it. If I'm facing an OI in this situation, in a Type 6, I'm dabbing too. I need these shots to count. He's got a big gun. It can hurt pretty badly, and I need to start whittling this guy down. So nice job here waiting for me. Take a little shot. Okay, that happens. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that AP did not pin. We take a shot in the side right there. I think you pen that if you'd gone to the APCR. So we're messing about with him just a little bit, trying to take a tricky shot on a weak spot. Okay, didn't work. So there's three shots, right? Two of which probably would have penned. Maybe three if we'd have gone to APCR. So we go to APCR. We come up here. I, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't know why you didn't take that shot. I think I would have moved the shot over here just for a little lead fire and just pop him right there in the turret. And we just, we just don't take it. So, you know, sometimes we're not always on top of our game. This is going to hurt right here. Again, I'm not really sure why we haven't shot. I guess you were trying to angle and not get hit, but I'd have just taken the shot. You're going to reload well inside him, and then we eat 590. Ready to fire. Thank goodness. That, that's a quite the low roll, actually, so that was good. Leopard's tearing us up from the side. We sort of push over here, and we finally get a retribution shot on that guy. We really just let that guy get away. We're, we're really we're trying to figure out a shot in the RBFM, and the whole time we have a nice with the APCR. This is penning all day right here with the APCR. Just take that shot. It's going to be a two shot, but hit him in the turret. What that does is it brings him now to a one shot. So that is a huge advantage. The problem with the, with it right now is once he reloads, he can push in, eat one of your shots, and thump you. Now we're kind of thinking about it, and we missed that one, it looks like. Like, holy cow. The good news is, for whatever reason, he's looking at somebody else over here, and not you, unknown what was going on there. We finally get him dead. I think you mentioned in there that you could have had some more hit points and did a few more things. That was a good example. This is why the middle's a bummer. Nashorn takes a shot at you from across the map. And we move on into here. We got 514 damage, 413 assist. Another auto-aim situation. Oh, man, again, I think... I just zoom in on this. Let's, let's figure this out. You know, if you've got your setup so that when you highlight it, you can see the cover of the solid part like I do, then you have a good idea where he is. He's below some terrain, probably this intervening ridge right here. But at least I can sort of aim at that. When you auto-aim this, it's 
If you get the highlight, you auto aim, then the auto aim is going to shift to center of mass, which is basically shooting, at least aimed wise, into the dirt right there. We do get a highlight on that, so that was not bad, but we he's dipping down below and we don't quite get there. Now honestly we're sort of wandering in the forest. There's an RBFM nearby. We're a one shot to him. And again, this to me looks a lot like light tank gameplay. You know this bush, you know this spot it appears. You kind of go up in here and you pick that guy off. Okay, good on you. That worked. We have two kills. 738 damage, 413 assists. Let's just take a look at the situation. We've gone from kind of losing to a bit up in this game. We've killed off three of their heavies, which is fantastic. The other one, I believe, is on the other side. Yes, it is over there. We've got an RBFM, a T67, and an M4 improved all camping in the back. And we are alone and unafraid with 88 hit points out in the front. I think it's time to fall back a little bit. Get out of this position. So we've got the NAS horn wandering around. We're just sitting in, honestly, what is kind of a light tank position and light tank gameplay. Thanks a lot. Now we're in the bush. We tell someone thank you. Uh, he says, you're welcome. And I think we're trying to give him grief for camping back there. Going to hang out here for just a bit. This is probably wise with only 88 hit points. You may have had in your, in your cranium that a little too much moving around here might get me spotted. There is a leopard. Of course, then we start shooting, which is certainly not going to help us with our camo. The RBFM is just not helping the team out very much. The M6 is over there doing the best he can. Looks like he's got some hit points, although he's outside of the draw distance, so we don't really know what his status is in terms of on the board right there. Super Chaffee dies. The LEF of all things kills him, which is, that's interesting. <laughs> Everybody's complaining about the guys that were hanging out in the back. And we get a bit of dead time right here. So this is the point in the game when we get to that mid to late game where I start to look at the map. We've got some open room now. It's not as saturated in terms of vision. Like, what can I do to start changing this thing a little bit? And you did say you were in comms talking about the game with your platoon mates. The Super Chaffee's dead, but he can provide some input by kind of jumping around to other tanks and talking about what they see and what they're doing. Like, what do I need to do right here? I don't know if you can get away, but I might think about trying to fade back in here just a bit. Let's see what you do. Great. M4 is moving up. That's going to give you some support. It may get you some shots. There goes the RBFM. Still lit. You know, when I see something like that, I want to, I'm going to go, all right, how do I maybe get a shot on him? All right, looks like he's in that bush. So let's move and get out of the way of this building right here and see if we can get a shot on him. Maybe you were worried about the, the leopard. Looks like the, there he is. All right, so that guy finds a leopard. Do we have a shot on this guy? Doesn't look like it, right? Based on where he is, he's probably down below the hill right there. We're staring at that and we start wandering off this way. And meanwhile... Boom. We have a shot on this guy. Right? He was lit earlier. The 3001 could use some support. Yeah. The M4 improved. It's probably going to win that fight, man. He had, came in there with a bunch of hit points. He's already tearing that guy up. So we're wandering off into this secondary situation. And we've sort of ignored the M10. Now the M10 is not lit. You can't always look at and see and investigate every single thing that is lit on the map. It'd be nice if you could. I fail to do it at times. But I try to prioritize the things that I can get to or that are important. And I really think, you didn't want the leopard to live, but I really think the M4 had that doped. If you'd have investigated that RBFM a little bit, we probably could have put a couple hits and maybe even closed that guy out. There he is. And the auto-aim is a bad idea right here. See how it was sort of lagging behind? It's just, watch it. It's, well, you've turned it off by now. It, there's no lead fire with the auto-aim. So be really careful about relying on auto-aim too much. It's a good tool. There are places where it works really great. It can free you up to drive and do other things uh, while you're taking the shots. But at long-range shots like that, it's just not something that works very well. Remember, guys, it does not do... Auto-aim does not do lead fire. 
it's it's going to center a mass and based on the way the game works it if there's any kind of right to left it's always lagging just a little bit it doesn't even push forward far enough to really keep at center of mass in terms of the length of what it's targeting it just it sort of follows along take a shot rbfm's beating up the other rbfm that's a bummer because we probably could have hurt him or maybe even shut him out earlier. Finally, we get a shot, and that there was no lead fire on that. It just caught the very back edge of that tank. This is a great example, actually. Just back up and take a look at it. There he is. All right, great, we see it. We push forward. This has a lot to do with the velocity of the shell. The faster the shell, the more you can get away with not putting any lead fire. So you kind of wait till he gets here, right? And we shoot. Boom. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking a little bit in front of this guy. And I want to shoot about right here. I don't want to shoot as far back as you did. And it just, kept, look at that, just barely catches the back edge of the tank. The dispersion just happened to put the shell where it needed to be. The, the LEF takes a shot on us, does 40. This is a great move by you in terms of, I got to get out of here. The uh, looks like that was the Sioux, and I think you have the LB, LBFM or whatever it is, the LEF. The LBFM is an M10 BFM and an LEF put together. That's a different new tank. <laughs> but yeah, you need to get out of there. You don't want to just sit there while an LEF is thumping you. All right, so the Nashorn's moving around. Your M4 improved, pushes into the backfield. Long range shot, unfortunately, armor not hit. Waiting for the, okay, he dies, fantastic. All right, now what? Nashorn's back by the cap. You have two artillery there. This is, again, we're not in a great situation here. All of our guys over on the other side are dead. There's a Nashorn that's probably a two shot to you. Maybe between you and the improved. So now I'm going to start swinging back and try to support this guy. Let's see if this dude comes out from behind the stuff. The M4 gets a piece of him. It's another piece of him. All right, looks like the M4's got this guy potentially. There we go. Fantastic. All right, what's next? we got to find the RBFM and the OI, which I believe the OI actually has some significant amount of HP left. He's been on that side of the map the whole time. It's showing 100%, but I don't know how often we had him inside of draw distance. So we're going to climb on up here. Heading back. I like this. This is a good idea. We're heading back. Certainly don't want the LEF to get a nice, easy shot on us. We obviously also don't want the M10 to see us, so we'll use some of these buildings to push on in here. M4 kills the LEF. Fantastic. Oh, look. The OI does not have full hit points. Excellent. He's got 509, so he's about a two-shot, maybe a three-shot. Unfortunately, the M4... So the M4 does a nice job late game there, getting some things done. Kills a few guys off. What did he end up killing off? He got uh, four of them, so good on him. But unfortunately, the OI has now turned it into a 2v2 with you having one artillery. All right, here they come. Again, man, I can't stress this enough. It is it is APCR time right now. This is the end game. So you did actually a nice job keeping some APCR on your tank. So good on you. But now's the time. If you want to increase your odds of winning at this point, it's time to dab two. So we see this guy moving. Boom, nicely done. Didn't require a whole lot of lead fire. Kind of hanging out. All right, we knocked down whatever it was. I don't know if he knows. He's sort of sitting there. We shoot once. And I think he starts to move because you're going to see him in a minute. He doesn't like that, so he's started moving again. There he is. Looks like we missed both those. We auto aim. Not bad. Look, when they're that long that and at that range, then the auto aim is probably going to work. Try to back out of this so he doesn't nuke us. He takes a shot. I might have pushed straight forward in there and tried to take that shot myself. Maybe you were worried about the RBFM getting a sneaky shot. So we back out of that. We have an RBFM and an OI to deal with. This is very tricky right here. So you've changed your position. I actually kind of like that. Oh, geez, there he is. Oops. We didn't even scratch that. 
I thought you were done for then. Oh, and the RBFM bounces. He's cursing his luck right now. Absolutely cursing his luck. He fired regular AP as well. He had a nice angle, so I don't know if it would have helped. Oh, and the double not track. All right, you got to get aggressive here because this guy will not out, not out reload. Nicely done. We are now into the APCR. We shut that guy down. A little bit of luck, but we'll take it. And now we're just looking for the M10R BFM. Where is this guy? Is he charging in? Does he have the hit points? Is he going to try to use stealth? No, he's just going to do that. And I... Wow, okay. I'm not even sure what happened there, to be honest. How did you aim that? Let's go back and look at that. That was very strange, actually. And sometimes on the replays, you don't get everything. Now, this is your view. The guy's going to show up. Kind of aiming high there. It's very strange that your, your turret's not following your aim point that well. That's very odd. We swing over. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what's going on with that. That's very odd. How you made that? I'm not really sure. It must be a replay thing. That's strange how that worked. I didn't really also hear it do the auto aim thing. So very, very strange. Like I said, sometimes the replays show weird stuff. We shut that guy down. 1,496, 564 assists with four kills. My general assessment there, ants marching, is you played that a lot like you might do a light tank. So. Try to think about on your initial positioning where heavy tanks would go. And in general, that's a better spot to be. I don't think the Magic Force was really a good player in this particular match, just based on the little support you would have had over there. I really think if you and the M6 had worked together, that would have been a much better situation for your team over there. The engagement with the first, the Type 64, I think you lost a shot right there, easier shot you could have had. I think you could have shut down the OI much faster. Think about using two. You're carrying it. You might as well. That's the reason it exists. If you come up against something that's heavily armored and you got to get rid of them. Hung around in the middle, in my opinion, maybe just a little too much. But did a decent job of, of staying in the game with the low hit points that you had. And then, nice job end game, try to, trying to figure that out. Coming back to the middle and shutting those guys down. At least you didn't sit in a bush and camp. So really, the whole thing just looked a lot like a light tank effort while driving a heavy tank. So try to shift that mentality a little bit to sending your heavy tank over in the heavy area. It can get tricky as well doing that, uh, dealing with angling, dealing with trading, understanding when to expose and take shots and when not to. The way you did it kept you in the game for a long time, but honestly, that early game, you, you weren't very effective where you were. So you weren't reducing many of the enemy's hit points at that point. It wasn't until mid to late game where you started to do that, and you did a pretty good job of that from the mid to late game. All right, if you guys have any other advice for ants marching, go ahead and send that down into the comments. That's all I've got for today. We will see you.